G'day there, it's uh, Kieran from Solid Tech here. In this video what I'd like to show you guys is how to create a tapered sheet metal helical spring uh, using the lofted bends command. So this is a question that someone asked me a little bit earlier and I thought it was a nice example of using the lofted bends command. So you can see what I've got here is just a solid sweep. Uh, we've got our profile sketch and our helix which we're using as our path. Uh, but the problem is if we jump across to our sheet metal toolbar here. Um, if we try to use the convert to sheet metal feature or the good old-fashioned insert bends feature we wouldn't actually be able to flatten this geometry. Uh, there's no planar face and there's no suitable linear edge. Uh, you're welcome to try it um, but uh, you can take my word that it probably won't work. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to delete the sweep feature and uh, what we need to do because we're going to use the lofted bends uh, feature up here is we need to create another profile to loft to on the inside here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another helical um, path or profile so just start a sketch here and I'm actually going to link it to the profile so even though we're not actually going to use that original profile uh, for anything in our lofted bend we can use it now to control the dimensions and the overall uh, internal and external width of our spring, uh, so that's nice. So this is the new 2011 helical uh, feature manager. So you can see here, I'm just going to come through and just change these values. And if I give it a taper of 45 degrees, and you can see that that matches up with uh, the other helix. So now I have two profiles. So if I launch my lofted bends command you'll notice that I can't actually use these curves. So this is one limitation of the helical of the lofted bend tool uh, is that you can't use curves unlike the other uh, lofting command so the solid loft and the surface loft. Um, the other limitation is that you notice that I don't have the selection manager so what I actually need to do here is I need to start a 3D sketch and convert it convert that helix into sketch geometry and I need to do the same for the other profile as well, just convert that OK, so it's very important that you have two separate 3D sketches to use as your profile, each one can contain one set of contours, so one and one there now you can see that when we select both of these it's going to do a nice job of lofting those together I'm just zooming in a little bit so you can see here I just want to flip my direction around I'm going to make that 2 mil thick and you can see it does a nice job of that right there just hide these curves and just hide that original sketch see that this part will flatten quite nicely. It is fairly complex geometry though, so uh, you wouldn't want to go putting hundreds of these into your assembly. The other thing that you'd want to do is make sure that you use the correct bend allowance, k-factor, um, otherwise you'll find that the developed length will be incorrect, so you probably need to bend up some samples first to make sure you're getting the right value if this needs to be accurate. Okay, so um, I want to take this one step further and show you guys uh, how we can use the lofted bends to, say, add a wall to the side of this. And I'm going to do that by uh, using a surface command because we can't really, uh, just the same way that we couldn't really offset a curve on the inside, we can't really offset a curve upwards uh, using our 3D sketch tools. Um, we could create another helix, but I thought I'd show you a different way. So I'm going to use ruled surface. And the ruled surface is nice, it's going to create a uh, single surface for us. And the idea is we're going to use the edge of it uh, to convert to into a 3D sketch. So there's lots of different options. Um, say for example, if I wanted to create a tapered wall, I could pick this edge here. Make that a bit longer and you can see here, so I can actually give it an angle <coughs> from the top wall. Uh, if I just want a 90 degree wall, I could use a perpendicular vector, 
and in this case here I'd need to pick the front plane so it's going to run the edge of the uh, the edge of the wall here or the ruled surface is going to be parallel to the front plane you might also find that you need to pick an alternate direction um, because an edge is defined by two faces so it could either be um, parallel to one face or another face uh, the other way to get a nice perpendicular wall is to we can use the sweep option and we can sweep uh, in reference to the top plane so the the profile for that ruled surface is coming out perpendicular to the top plane so I'm just going to run with this one here so we have a nice straight wall and then we can start another 3D sketch convert that into sketch geometry and OK and we don't need that surface anymore so I can just hide that so I'm just going to start my lofted bends command again and I'm going to loft here and I'm going to reuse the uh, 3D sketch that I'd used previously so I don't actually need to go and create that again so I can save myself a bit of time there just um, go and select that from inside the previous feature and if I just zoom in I just want to make sure that I flip that around to the outside as well and again you can see it does a nice job of that and if I select that one and just flatten it And the interesting thing there is it, it's probably a little bit hard to see, but it is actually a slightly curved wall, so it's not perfectly flat. And just to finish it off, because this is 2011, uh, we can also add a weld bead uh, from my weldments toolbar. I'm just going to select these two internal edges here. So that's going to pick up the virtual intersection of those faces. You could pick the two outside ones as well, uh, but I found that it took a little bit longer to detect that uh, virtual intersection, so it's faster if you pick the two internal faces there. Uh, two mil is fine. I'm going to make it intermittent. So like we're sort of tack welding it in place. I'm give it a five mil length and a gap of 50 mil. Seems to look pretty okay. And you can see there we've now got some welds along here, plus our annotation, which might just turn off. And that's our part done. Thanks for watching.